But let's bring in Dirk Willer. He's global head of macro and emerging market strategy at Citi. Dirk, it's good to see you. Welcome. Thanks a lot for having me, Kelly. What surprised you most as you dug through the data here? Um, yeah, I think it's uh, the, the big picture call is, is true. It, it, it is positive for equities the election years. Um, I think what's interesting, though, is that on a more tactical basis, a, a few months before the election, the market often pulls back, puts in a little bit of risk premium in the price, and um, that is usually unwound then after the election. And in a sense, the interesting thing is that the U.S. elections these days behave almost like the emerging market elections, where a lot of risk premium is put into the market before the election, and that's, it's taken out afterwards. So that is, that is an interesting pattern. Let me um, make sure before you move on that people caught that you said. The interesting thing is that the U.S. elections are behaving like emerging market elections, and I think people would sometimes agree with you in more ways than one. Exactly. So, um, but it, it has been the case for a while, actually, not just since 2016, um, that in the big picture, it's a good year for the S&P. Um, more tactically, you know, at the end of the summer, markets get choppy, and that choppiness gets unbound once the election happens. What are the clearest trades people could write down now and use as we move throughout the year? Because some of them are a little quirky. I mean, you, you have, you've got utilities in there, some community, some other sectors, uh, things like that. The dollar is one clear uh, one. And there's like four different outcomes. I mean, I, listen, I'm not a political expert, but as far as I can see, we could have unified Republican, unified Democrat, split uh, GOP president, Democratic uh, Congress, and vice versa. All of this seems to be on the table right now. So what are the clearest uh, ones that for you have obvious trades people could put on? Yeah, the, uh, the unified Democrats is probably the least likely, just because the Senate math is really favoring the Republicans. And so two out of the three potential outcomes are actually a, a divided government, which is the best for the market. So in the big picture, it's broadly positive. But if you go one level below that, um, the election obviously rhymes a little bit with uh, 2016. And some things will be very similar to 2016, some will be different. Uh, the things that will be similar is that we do see dollar strength again. Um, and that is partially because we see the risk of more fiscal spending and we see uh, the risk of tariffs and both are uh, dollar bullish. I don't think it will be as bad as uh, for the Mexican peso as it was in 2016, but, um, but broadly speaking, dollar bullishness. Um, we also, remember in 2016, we saw weaker treasuries. This time, I think that might again happen, but in a steepening context, because the Fed will still be cutting at the time, probably when the election rolls around. So it's not an outright treasury sell-off, but a steeper curve. Um, and then if you go on the sector level, and the, the clear trades are usually that um, Republicans uh, favor, um, favor oil and energy. Um, but in 2016, it also was very strong for financials and industrials. And that could again play out that way. Um, Democrats, of course, uh, healthcare would, would perform the best. So I think on the sector level, you have to choose a little bit um, what your what your potential outcome so, really is, but um, but I think in terms of the risk the market will trade going into the election, um, I think the risk would be a Trump in, and so therefore you could see. Um, industrials and financials doing better than healthcare. Quick last question, Dirk. Let me turn all of this on its head. Now that you've looked at all these playbooks for recent election cycles, does the trading data yet tell you that the market is anticipating one certain outcome here? It, it's very early, right? I mean, the, a lot of the patterns I described start to work out a few months before the election mm. and um, when, the, when the programs are clearer. And so I think at this stage, you know, the, the market, I think the biggest takeaway from the market is uh, that it's it's believing into a soft landing and not a recession. That's probably a bigger call that you can suss out right now for market behavior than how the election will, will, will pan out. But I think by the end of the summer, the election will be front and center, and then you will be able to draw much firmer conclusions of what the market yeah. is believing and what will the, be the outcome.